Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Joe, we are back at Newport Beach this week, episode 19 of season three, The Secrets and Lies. I think this was better than last week's episode, maybe. Like inspired I, name, though. Like, every episode's got secrets and lies. Like, uninspired. And I feel like whatever we were really thinking we had clicked into in the first two seasons where the names had these, like, secret double or even triple meanings... Like the undertow last week and secrets and lies this week. It's like, what? what is this? <laughs> like, what is even happening here? I will say two weeks ago, the journey that worked out because, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, Ryan. Well, no, Ryan did. Ryan went on the road trip the week earlier. Whatever. This no. show sucks. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> this season sucks. This season, this season sucks. sucks. Let, hey, this season like, sucks. let's be real. Be real, Matt. This season sucks. The season's terrible. Yeah. Um, Ryan, Sadie, Seth, and Summer, they're out partying at the bait shop. Ryan and, and Sadie dip out early to, to go to the bone zone. And that's when Seth and Summer catch Marissa and Volchek basically fucking on the dance floor. Um, <laughs> yes. And that's our... And that's our cold open <laughs> yes. to this episode. Wait, then, then like Seth makes some like rando joke like that is so inappropriate and then nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah, that's i mean it was God very like I, I know you've brought this up before but like that moment it just made me laugh so much because it reminded me of it reminded me of going to uh, my college's improv troupe shows uh so the improv troupe at my school ucsd uc san diego was called foosh <laughs> that was okay. their name and they did they would do these games at a foo show where they would they basically called it like crime scene investigator things and they would like you know they would have to basically come up with like a zinger one liner pun and then they would play the beginning yeah! of this exactly the yeah. CSI Miami and like they'd be just like you know they would have to do the 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 sunglasses and everything and that's what this reminded me of so have you watch i this is not my pop culture thing but i i just watched the first three i don't know how to find season four on streaming it's not on max but the first three episodes of angie tribeca did you ever watch angie tribeca or know anything about it i did watch at least the first season i don't remember the show though so one of the bits in the show is instead of there being a zinger Mm -hmm. to kick off the theme song it's always that someone gets injured and yells, and that's how the theme song kicks off. It's, it's like a, ah, and then like the music starts playing. Um, anyway, yes, no, it is it is very kind of startling every time it happens. Totally forgot Julie Cooper was a person that existed. The, that phone call in the back of the car, I was like, oh, yeah. Julie yeah, Cooper's here. <laughs> yeah, she's engaged now. Of course she is. Something that we forgot to mention last week that needs to get brought up this week, because mm-hmm. I just bri- briefly was like, the board wants to get rid of Matt, is like, 
Marissa stays at Matt's house when he's not there. And like, I can't even wrap my head around when were the circumstances where they would even become friendly in this season. Re- really? Like we really shoehorned it in like Matt, the Matt and the Sadie of it all. Like don't are the ones where it's like these external characters make no fucking sense. Johnny made sense. No. Johnny made sense. Like, I'm just like, what is happening here? Right. So like, the Matt storyline now is that things are getting worse for Matt. Um, and now it's kind of the world of like Matt versus Sandy. Like mm-hmm. Matt's getting pissed off at Sandy. And that leads eventually to this insane scene where like some thugs come to rough him up in his house and like smash up his place. And then he says something to Sandy that almost implies like he thinks Sandy hired the hit or so like, I don't know where we're going with this, but I'm like, this sucks. Everything about this is terrible. Yeah. And I, and, and again, like, cause it has been, a, it has been fuck. It's, I realized today that it's been four years since I've watched the show like, last mm-hmm. time uh, because I did it in 2020. Um, and 2020 was four years ago. Uh, I, realize like i wasn't sure if anything was going to happen to matt when that fucking shady doctor was like you just let me handle it you know you just let me handle it uh it's okay sandy don't worry your fucking little head about it i got it yeah. and i was like oh fuck are we gonna fuck up matt i forgot i completely forgot if we do and uh, so i don't know this and i don't care enough to look it up but maybe you know is the guy that sandy has been dealing with this like chair of the board the doctor is this matt's girlfriend's dad i can't tell if he's matt's girlfriend's dad or if he is just like beneath that but i know that the that the fact that matt is dating someone tied to the hospital which was the original intent of him dating her was to get an in but now there's like feelings involved and all that yeah is is part of the drama to begin with yeah is and sandy says that in the last episode he goes i think that this has nothing to do with the man and has everything to do with who the man is dating um that's all i want to talk about with matt right now i'm sure we'll get to talk about it more in the coming weeks um, but I'll be pretty happy when Matt is no longer on my screen as well. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give this episode at least one star. Okay. And as I've said, the stars in my world are just given for arbitrary things. Okay. And the arbitrary thing that earned this episode a star was I got so excited when Summer looked at Marissa and said, oh, well, aren't you just the saddest girl in the whole wide world? <laughs> and I thought... Fuck yes. This is why I love Summer. Honestly, the whole feud between Marissa and Summer, I'm sure is supposed to feel more upsetting than it is. Um, But like them throwing on the sunglasses and not talking to each other at breakfast was more charming to me than it had any right being. I was like, I'm into this. I like this. More of this, please. Yeah. Um, It was a cute bit. Because, like, summer stuff automatically doesn't read as too serious. Like, summer angry, we've come to believe, is comical. And, like, but, like, where it fails for me, and I agree with you, like, it was a fun bit. But where it fails for me is the fact that, like, Marissa, has, there's no joy. There's no there's no joy in it. And she is, no. like, she is literally doing this because this is what she knows. Like, she's, yeah. there's no, even, like even when because when ryan and seth are playing like you can tell that you can tell the comedic chops of ben mckenzie who plays ryan like you you, they're there there's nothing there with with marissa like and i don't know if that's because like at this point she's already over it the actress uh misha barton is already over it but i don't know it's it's very it's very exhausting. Did you listen to the um, the OC podcast hosted by... No, the OC, what, the OC Julie? bitches? No, I did not. Yeah. Have you? Have you been I'm listening? Just, no, I, I don't want it to kind of direct uh, my opinions too much. Exactly. But I'd love to know what... I know that they've at least gotten to season three. They may have already finished the whole show for all I know. But I am curious how they feel about season three. Mm-hmm. It would be wild if they're talking about on that 
podcast how it's their favorite season. Can something. you imagine? It's like, hey, everybody, we're just also here to tell you that we love season three. One hundred percent is my favorite season. Like because like that's no. one thing I'll say about I mean, it it almost feels like punching down. But right now, the Fake Doctors Real Friends podcast is officially on the controversial ninth season of Scrubs that wasn't supposed to be a ninth season of Scrubs. It was supposed to be a spinoff series that ABC mm -hmm. at the zero hour changed the name back to Scrubs and released as the ninth season. And like, you know, Zach Braff is only in five of the 13 episodes and they're watching it and they are absolutely just being like, no wonder the fans rejected this. This is a bad show. <laughs> like, So I, I hope that the OC podcast that, that, uh, that summer and Julie Cooper host is as, as blatantly sincere as that is to just call out when something isn't working as much as when something is. Um, but who knows? Uh, We'll move on from the Matt stuff. Let's linger on the Marissa stuff a little bit more. We were talking about how this name sucks. I'd like to propose a better name that would have captured two storylines at once. Okay. The sobriety. Ooh. Because. Yeah, that's so much better. That's so much better, <laughs> Matt. Joe, I cried watching an episode of The O.C. officially. Because when Kirsten gets her nine months chip mm -hmm. and then looks at Seth and starts to talk about how Seth was the mm -hmm. reason why she got sober, that that broke me. Like it wasn't like a like a full on like loud screaming, crying weep, but I, I felt the tingle in my eyes of when a tear is starting to form. And mm -hmm. I thought this is this is an unexpectedly beautifully written scene in a Mm -hmm. season of television that has felt like no one was writing anything that they were just throwing shit on a wall and calling it a day for the last 19 episodes. This was, am I alone in this? I think that that is like a genuinely beautiful moment in the, tr in the garbage dump that is the rest of this season. Yeah. I actually, I wanted to ask you about that. I also think it's weird that like someone who's not an AA was allowed to be at an AA meeting. I think that's like a big no, no, like, like I don't, I don't think I can just like show up to like one of my brother's I mean, AA meetings. I feel like it ruins the one of those two A's. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like there's a there's a time and place for for that, right? But despite that, despite the fact that they clearly are breaking every fucking rule of AA, well, um, well I wanted to ask. I you thought it was about a really nice. Scene. So, like, what you know at the you know I'm. I think it's pretty I think Brian is pretty open about his journey, right? So like yep. what was there something like I have Brian's 6 month chip over there. Nice. Did he that do something Christmas similar gift. with y'all like in terms of No, you but know. when he got it, he gifted it to me for Christmas that year. Wow. And he said you were you were one of the big reasons why I got sober and I want you to have this 6 month chip thing. Now what I also loved in this AA, honestly the stuff with Kirsten is uh, the other thing that earned this thing a star because um, George, the speaker right before Kirsten talking about how he accidentally shot his wife when he was at his lowest. And yeah. then Seth having that one line of was, he was like, Hey, congratulations. And so now you're, uh, she's like, he's been sober for 30 years. He goes, well, congratulations with that chip. You're uh, only 29 years and three months away from William S. Burroughs over there. That was, that was pretty great. I rewound that. That's a great like, line. That's yeah. a really good line. Um, that I was like, that is, that is a good Seth callback pop culture reference that I don't think the intended watching audience of the OC would even get like that is a, but it makes sense for Seth to know that information. You know what I mean? Like I like, I like that quite a bit. Um, the Ryan stuff is the Ryan stuff. It's Sadie is going to move back home unless Ryan does some grand gesture. Ryan uh, can't ca car par mentalize. Mm-hmm women in places and things so she is leaving the marissa stuff is really complicated to me marissa is on this steady slide into giving in to every single one of her demons while she's with volchek but yet she still has the like 
sobriety to stop Sadie from leaving on behalf of Ryan and get her to come back. And like, I feel like I should care about this more than I do, but I really don't. Um, and then she's like trying to convince a bartender to serve her underage by just like sweet talking him. Like that's ever going to work. And then because like, she couldn't just, do that, she goes and gets a fucking bump of Coke or whatever the fuck. Right. Uh, oh, my last note is, oh, fun. Marissa does Coke now. Um, Which, OK, but let me be let me let's realty, though. Right. Realty did when she said uh, to Volchek, I have never done that before. Did you have a hesitate for a minute? I was like, really? Marissa's I, Marissa's vice tended to be drinking, I will say, but yeah, I don't buy that. The only other th- note that I have written down that I have to talk about is Summer's dad saying to Julie Cooper, you realize this is a trial engagement. What the fuck is like, what is even the, why get engaged? Isn't the living together, the trial engagement part of this? Well, he he is nothing if like ruthlessly practical, right? Yeah. And I mean, I get it. I get it. Well, I get it. I get it and I don't get it. I get it if his perspective is we have to see how the girls react to us getting engaged, which would make sense if your girls weren't just two months away from graduating and going off to college yeah. and it not really fucking mattering anymore. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. And like, see, my thing, like if Summer was 10, I would get it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if Summer and Marissa were 10 year olds and you were doing a trial engagement to see if they could handle it, because if they hate each other and it causes a lot of drama, it's going to be a tough eight to 10 years of your existence. And like, maybe you shouldn't move forward with that. But yeah. Dear God, that made me so angry. And i that's a character that I've liked up until this point. I, that like legitimately pissed me off. I still like him, though, because it also gives him a little bit of cover. Right. Because like Julie does have a reputation as a fucking gold digger. Right. Like, So it gives yeah. him a little bit of cover to be like, yeah, this is, you know, we. And it also like. I, I can already in my mind, I'm like, oh, my God, are we going to go to a place where like now marissa's behavior is endangering uh fucking you know the meal ticket <laughs> which <laughs> probably like this is we've seen this plot line before right like we've seen this plot line in season two with caleb <laughs> like no new stepfathers <laughs> yeah no i it is this is this whole season is like all of your favorite storylines from the first two seasons just done worse and less interesting yeah. bizarro right this these are yeah. like weird multiversal like type of plot lines that are awful because I've, I've already blacked out his name entirely in my mind but like the guy that she met at therapy like that's just volchek like volchek's just that character 2.0 basically <laughs> it's like it's what is it it's a it's an oliver and Trey. Yes. Yeah, it's Oliver and Trey just melded into a single character. Yeah. Um and the worst also, parts of both. The worst parts yes. of both. Oh yeah, there's no winning in Volchek. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Look, Bumble knows you're exhausted by dating. All the, must not take yourself too seriously, and 6-1 since that matters, and what do I even say other than, hey? <sighs> well... That's why they're introducing an all-new Bumble with exciting features to make compatibility easier, starting the chat better, and dating safer. They've changed, so you don't have to. Download the new Bumble now. In the darkest corners of the internet, a nameless, formless entity has been growing. No one dares question where it was created or what it wants, But those who have been entranced by its musings chant its blood-curdling name in unison. Horror Movie Night! 
Find Horror Movie Night on your favorite podcasting app or at hmnpodcast.com. Joe, they uh, they also skimped a lot on the music here. Two songs. Two songs I, I wrote down. Uh, but one of them, I could see you picking just for the sentence I'm about to say out loud. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul Oakenfold, Faster Kill Pussycat, featuring Brittany Murphy is the song that plays in the beginning of the episode when they're at the bait shop. And then at the end of the episode, we hear Meredith by Ocean Size, um, which I just wrote that song down because I like another song by Ocean Size, and I also enjoyed this one just fine. Um, But I was not really emotionally attached to either one of them. So, Joe, Phantom Planet, once again, Uh, California? (laughs) Well, I was actually going to say Meredith. But I didn't okay. know who I, I also never look up who the artists are because I don't want that to sway me unless I unless I uh, know it. So I wait for you to tell me. Um, however, I will say that I will say that Paul Oakenfold uh, is a um, he's an artist that uh, at my work at San Diego Pride, we've had Paul Oakenfold as an artist for Pride Festival before. Nice. So um, in that spirit, I will go with a Paul Oakenfold. There you go. Love and, it. You know, R.I.P. Uh, Brittany Murphy. <laughs> yes. Yes. R.I.P. Obviously. Um, and lastly, we're going to talk about pop culture stuff. I don't know how big of a splash this movie made uh, at the time of its release, but I watched for the very first time the Skeleton Twins. Yeah. Um, uh, starring uh, Bill Hader and uh, Kristen Wiig. Mm-hmm. I think I have that correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, just a really good sweet little indie dramedy um i just really enjoyed it wanted to just give it a shout out i i it kind of flew under my radar i didn't know about it uh but my girlfriend loved it and and had me watch it one night and i said oh this is actually a delightful little little uh film with some comedy but a lot of sad drama mixed in there so Joe, off mic, you already told me what the pop culture thing is you're talking about. So let's let's talk about what, from trailers anyway, seem to be this the sauciest, spiciest film of the summer, uh, Challengers. Oh, yeah. So my birthday was in April, and I, um, a friend of mine wanted to hang out. And this is a friend who I love watching movies with. Um, he's a movie person as well as me. And... I was like, man, I really want to watch Challengers for my birthday, but it comes out on the 26th. And then I know sometimes with these indie films, I don't know if it's necessarily an indie, but like sometimes with much anticipated films, they'll get a very small release. That's like at special theaters. Exactly. They'll do like a small, like you can only go. It's like every day leading up to the Thursday before the release, they'll do like one night where, or no, they'll do like one showing at seven o'clock. And they happened to do this with Challengers. It was a uh, pre-screening the Monday after my the day after my birthday, which is a Monday night, 7 p.m. and in IMAX, which like, I don't know if this movie like I don't know this movie should have been in IMAX. I was glad I watched it. I was forced to watch it in IMAX. So if yeah, you're not you didn't for- have a say in that, but yeah, if you're not forced to watch it in IMAX and you don't have like a gift card that you're OK using, then like to pay for an IMAX ticket, you don't necessarily need it. Um, It might be something to consider if you want to watch it a second time. Um, This film challengers is by the way, what we're talking about directed by Luca Guagadino who did um, call me by your name starring Zendaya in her first like real starring role in a in a film. Um, Like she is leading the film. And I heard that recently and I could not believe that. And then I looked and I'm like, oh, yeah, she's like number one on the call sheet in a way that she hasn't been for other films. Like, OK, but she's got I mean, she's always had star quality. And this is where we see her come in as like a as an artist. She the tension between the characters is so good. Like this is a way the way that the love triangle plays out between Zendaya Mike Feist, who plays her husband, and then Josh O'Connor, who plays like their former friend, now rival, um, Zendaya's former lover in the in the movie. Like the tension among the three of them is really palpable, and 
there's a lot like everyone there's nothing wasted on uh in, including just like bit or not like like background characters right like everybody gets a little bit is like fl gets fleshed out in a way that like adds to the texture of it like it doesn't feel uh, one of the highest praises that i agree with is that the movie doesn't feel written the movie okay. feels like you're watching you're literally watching like real tennis people this real life situation going on um and for those i'm not going to spoil it too much but one thing that i went in knowing that actually really helped me appreciate the film more is um i read something where the three leads of the sh of the of the film they played uh they played it or the direction that they were given is that every relationship has tension among the three of them there's tension between each of the male leads and zendaya there's tension between the two male leads right like every okay. relationship has us has a tension whether that's a sexual tension whether that's you know whatever it is the and and knowing that was really helped me really enjoy it because you understand how intimate the movie is on that level okay i'm interested i mean i remember seeing just the trailer and mm -hmm. being like this looks good like like it wasn't but I also was like, this looks spicy. This looks like yeah. a real adult ass role yeah. that they're throwing Zendaya in and I'm for it. Yeah. And like, I'm spoiler all in. alert, spoiler alert again for this. And this will not, this may not affect, but like this movie is probably one of the sexiest movies. Like, it will be like the sexiest movie of the year. And we don't see any fucking. Yeah. Like, I mean, even the trailer feels really sexy. And like I didn't imagine we were going to see anything more than the implications in yeah. that trailer, and I was like, "Hot damn!" <laughs> like, yeah, like, you do. Like see, I got like, the vapors. I was it, <laughs> exactly. Like you do see, like you see kissing. You see, like you see everything before and everything after, but you never mm -hmm. get them like in the middle of the act, right? You never see. Interesting. Like it, you don't even get like you know people under a blanket fucking like this is literally just like you get the you get the foreplay and you get the the afterglow but you don't see it and and when i i realized that because i was listening to another podcast that was talking about it and in fact actually las culturistas released an entire bonus episode just on challengers and they've never done that before they've never released an entire bonus episode on on anything <laughs> yeah that's amazing i mean it's you uh you know that I've been going through some some slightly uh frustrating car troubles mm -hmm. which has really sucked specifically being that like we're finally hitting the time of the year where there is basically a movie I want to see in theaters every week. Yep. Um so having the combination of financial plus just car not working problems stacked on top of each other has made that uh slightly more difficult, but I do hope to see that uh sooner rather than later cuz I from the first second I saw the trailer, I thought, ooh, this has Matt Kelly mm -hmm. uh, film written all over it. So I am yeah. I'm excited to hear that it gets the Joe seal of approval. It does. Um, now, and what go doesn't with get someone the Joe... you like to talk about movies with. OK, because... I'm, a, I'm a go yeah. by myself movie goer in general, but I will text you whenever I see it so I can talk to somebody. Please, about it. please. Um, now, going from a thing that Joe really liked to something he doesn't like very much season three of the OC. <laughs> We've only got six more episodes left to go. So let's, I, I think it's going to be all uphill from here, Joe. That's my, that's my prediction. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll, you know, what did the kids say? Delulu, you're Delulu lemon at that point, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> listening to the Geekscape Network.